The Shores of Gold, a mythical place in the Sea of Thieves with about as much lore significance and money as you could imagine. There's only one problem, the way to that island is closed. It lies beyond the Shroud, the Red Sea, a place no vessel can survive a voyage to as the waters themselves tear apart your ship. So how do we get there? I'm so glad you asked, with a 9 part story quest of course. Truth be told, I didn't see myself tackling this challenge pretty much ever for reasons that will become obvious very soon, but I also knew that if I was going to do it, I'd take you guys along for the ride. So join me as my friends and I set sail towards the most legendary place in the entire game. Welcome to the Sea of Tales. To begin our journey towards the shores of gold, we would need something to help us survive the shroud that engulfs the Sea of Thieves. The fittingly named Shroud Breaker would be said item, and thankfully this completely inconspicuous individual knows where we can find it. Well actually he doesn't, but the Pirate Lord does, and he conveniently knows where we can find his journal. We're not gonna talk about how said Pirate Lord is literally sitting in his basement and we could just go ask him about it, because if we did, he would have no reason to spout literal minutes of exposition at us. But whatever, we go out and find the remains of the magpie's wing to retrieve the ship's log and begin hunting for the Shroud Breaker. Now it is worth mentioning that despite Tall Tales pretty much being single player adventures, there are no Tall Tales specific servers. In fact, we spotted a bunch of ships who could turn around at any moment to begin messing with us, meaning PvP would be a concern throughout most of our journey. Anyway, using the logbook we just fished out, we can retrace the route that the ship had taken. Apparently they were being chased by somebody and in typical PvE player fashion they'd rather toss their treasure overboard than handing it over to their enemy. Birdie was trying to google our destination so we didn't have to do set tracing, but it literally took him longer to find the solution than me just reading the book. Uh, we have to determine where you went down here. You already figured it out. I think it's Paradise Spring, southwest of us. And southwest we went. It wasn't a far journey for us to get to our destination, but on the way we spotted a ship that seemingly tried to intercept our course. Naturally, I didn't want any trouble if I could avoid it, and figured that we might as well be very blunt about what we're trying to do. Hello! We're just on a toll tale, don't mind us. Dan, have a good journey. Thank you! It seemed like the rumors ended up holding true. There appears to be a mutual understanding among experienced players that attacking somebody on a tall tale is considered to be a bit of a dick move. Of course, not everybody abides by those unwritten rules and I'm sure we will meet such individuals in due time. But for the time being, we were allowed to continue and retrieve the chest that was dumped into the ocean. The contents within consisted of a few items that didn't make a heck of a lot of sense to me. Oh yeah, this is it. Here you go, crowd breaker. Oh, we found it. Onto the shores of gold! But of course we celebrated too soon. I mean, what did you expect? There are eight more Toll Tales after this one and we're just about halfway through the first. What we actually found was a totem that functions as a key. Think Volts of the Ancients, but without the golds. It was at that point that we got the sneaking suspicion that Toll Tales consist of a heck of a lot of sailing. Sailing around that inconveniently brought us within firing range of an active skelly fort, but hey, we survived worse. Following the clues in the book, we eventually arrived at Crooks Hollow without much of an idea of what to expect. Usually when you use a totem key for a vault, the gate will open and proceed to close very slowly while you collect the treasure. But with this one, I just found myself in an empty room while Birdie went back to the ship to grab some food. I decided to light the braziers just to see if the light would reveal some more clues and well... Oh. Um... <laughs> Walk right by it, Cliff. Hmm. Cliff, where'd you go? Um, Cliff, where did you go? Cra um, Cliff, where are you? Hmm. What do I... Dude. Did you start it without me? No, I no, no, I it's would not. It's a puzzle, you idiot. That's that's not good. This was about as worst case scenario as it gets because you see, puzzles and I go about as well as oil and water. I mean, sure, you can immersion blend it to make it work, but in this metaphor, Birdie was my immersion blender, and unfortunately, I left the charger in the car. Did you do that? Where where do you see that? It's in the book. Like where in the book? But it's the one that's different from the other one, Cliff. I'm. I have no clue what you're saying. Oh my god! Just <laughs> do what I'm telling you. To. Okay, first, uh, first, first symbol, altar. first symbol, first symbol. First symbol is the one that, that looks like like an altar with flames coming out of it. Okay, there's only the version with the guy holding. There's the other version that you said isn't on there. What symbols are on the first one? Uh, guy holding the altar, some kind of boat with waves uh, atop and below. Uh, guy with just a simple object above him and guy with swords. Our communication was breaking down. The things Birdie described and the things that I saw in front of me did not line up, making me question whether or not I'd be able to complete it. But the solution was right in front of me. The symbols on the pillars had changed when I accidentally got the first column right. The solutions had to be put in sequence and did not force you to start over when inputting the wrong order. And eventually... Family, okay. 
Oh my god! Oh, Thorny, I did it! <laughs> Man, if you thought me struggling with the very first puzzle was painful to watch, then just you wait until we get further down the tall tales. But we weren't done here yet. The trap was disowned, but we still needed to find three medallions to reveal the treasure. The altar would show us a picture of where we could find them, so all we had to do was go around the island with those hints in mind and dig up the coins. Once all three medallions were slotted in, we would finally be given what we came here to acquire the Shroud Breaker. That's it, right? This is what we needed to survive our trip beyond the Red Sea. At least so I thought, until I saw the Tall Tale banner which said, The Grand Adventure Begins. Yeah, we're still very far from setting sail towards the shores of gold because you see, the Shroud Breaker's power comes from a few magical gems and well, they're not freaking here. Think Infinity Gauntlet without the Infinity Stones. Without the gems, this thing is basically just a glorified paperweight. For now, we had to sail through the storm and pass the active skeleton fort once more to deliver said paperweight to the mysterious stranger. We could have definitely picked a more convenient outpost than Ancient Spire, but whatever, it was the closest one around. Another thing I realized by now is that the NPCs in this game really enjoyed the sound of their own voice. If you are interested in this exposition, I guess you'll have to play it yourself. All you really have to know is that, in order to find the Infinity Stones, we needed the help of Madame Olivia, and she is currently stationed at Plunder Outpost. But before we could even set sail, we had to take care of some uninvited visitors. Wow. <laughs> I think we have nothing to worry about. I'm boarding. Remember when I said that experienced players don't usually attack people on Tall Tales? Yeah, they also don't usually run their ships into islands. I couldn't tell you what possessed this guy to attack us out of nowhere, and I take no pleasure in telling you that his already destroyed vessel upon sinking dealt more damage to our ship than him firing his cannons. To drive home their inexperience even more, this dude was trying to sell a Reaper's bounty at Ancient Spire. Of course, we had no intention to carry an item around that literally marks us on the map, so we just left it at the outpost before going on our merry way. A bunch of sailing later, we had to go past the skelly fort again, but what awaited us at the outpost definitely came as a bit of a surprise. Oh, is that our friends from earlier? I'm gonna go say hi. Hello! I'm looking for the captain of this fine vessel. Hello, how are you? I just wanted to announce ourselves, we're at the other end of the island, we're here for the next part of the tall tale. Wait a second, before you go, I'm about to log off. Take everything from the ship you want. Oh. Crate here. Cool, I'll, I'll gladly crate. take you up on that, thank you. Which tale are you doing? Uh, we're doing the Shroud Breaker for the first time. In stark contrast to the other outpost, this individual continued to extend nothing but kindness towards us. Contrary to that very pleasant conversation, we now had to listen to Madame Olivia's monologue for a few uninterrupted minutes. Basically, she was using a lot of words to describe that all we had to do was go out and kill two skeletons. Okay, it's a bit more complicated than that. To find out where the Infinity Stones are hidden, we had to track down those who are last known to have seen them. Captain Briggsy is the only pirate we know that has made it to the shores of gold, so that's as good a clue as we can get. We gotta go and find some of Briggsy's possessions, which with the help of a little bit of magic can show us where she is. The first of the skelly bros gave us a skeleton key, and the second one was hiding the chest that corresponded to said key. Within the chest, we found Briggsy's broken spyglass as well as a star map, which I'm sure are completely random items and have no relevance to any upcoming tall tale at all. I'm kind of breezing through this chapter because fighting skellies isn't exactly what I consider dangerous, but you know what is? That reaper emissary that logged in while we were hunting down said scaly bros. We were keeping a watchful eye on the map to make sure we didn't get ambushed, but when it was time to return to Madame Olivia, I couldn't help but notice that these reapers were kind of in the way. Um, back to Ancient Spire where the reapers currently had it. Uh, actually no, it's plunder, it's plunder. They're oh, oh my god! 30, 500 IQ diversion. They're going for the chest that we left at the outpost. We played 5D underwater chest. We're so many steps ahead, even we didn't know what we did there. Truly, my intellect scares even myself. With the Reapers preoccupied, we could deliver Briggsy's belongings to Madame Olivia and be rewarded with ever more exposition. We watched her do some Order of Souls stuff, I guess. And at the end of that light show, she handed over an enchanted compass. And man, do I ever hope you enjoy sailing for extended periods of time. Obviously, I've been cutting most of the travel out, but this part of the tall tale specifically was sending us to what felt like the opposite end of the map. Not exactly what I would call riveting gameplay. But as promised, the enchanted compass eventually led us to Briggsy, a fearsome skeleton lord that has taken the lives of many a pirate who faced her unprepared. Thankfully, we were prepared and dealt with her just like we've dealt with any skeleton lord before. Wait, why did we kill her again? Besides her making us sail across the entire dang map. Oh, right, her memories. Once we brought the skull to Madame Olivia, she could use her voodoo magic to 
extract Briggsy's memories and tell us where we can find the Infinity Stones. Is she making out with the skull? Oh my god. Yeah, I start to see why nobody's running their emissary flag. But here's the problem with Rare's insistence to drown you in exposition. Sea of Thieves is a PvP game. While we were sitting in that tent listening to her ramblings, a brigantine had run up on us and as is so often the case, they weren't here to talk. Yo, yo, we're just doing tall tales, chill. Double board? Yeah, we can go, ready? Wait, wait, yeah, I'm gonna, you go, I'm gonna need to actually be prepared to board. Gentlemen, greetings. Hey, we're just on a tall tale. Yeah, I'm coming. We're doing the shroud breaker. It seemed like my pleading was heard. It wasn't until I returned to our ship to bring the few gems worth of loot that we had over to them that I realized these guys were not the Reapers that I initially thought they were. They could, in fact, be reasoned with, even though some of them had interesting ways to communicate. Here it is. It's all yours. Our ship is still sailing, by the way. We might want to do something about that. Nah, no, we'll be okay. The captain of this very unique crew eventually blessed us with his presence, apologizing for the attack. As it turned out, these guys weren't really trying to fight people for loot, but just, like, for fun? We would have loved to indulge their desire, but unfortunately, these tall tales take absolute ages to complete, so we really did not have any time for that. After exchanging farewells, Birdie and I returned to our ship while these guys went looking for a new target. And that very much worked in our favor, because not only was the Reaper now clearing the skeleton fort that kept annoying us, but that other brigantine was fighting the Reaper as well. The two of us, meanwhile, could go and talk to Tasha at Ancient Spire, who was one of the names we siphoned out of Briggsy's skull. She told us about meeting Briggsy before she turned into a skeleton lord, though Tasha herself was still a child at the time. Yeah, no, I don't really care about any of this. What I do care about is the monstrosity of a book that she put in our hands that is somehow supposed to help us find the crown of the Shroud Breaker, which up until this point I had not realized we needed. Apparently, just finding the gems would be too easy. Would you be surprised if I told you that there was more safe in order, because decoding the gibberish in that children's book revealed three different locations, all of which were inconveniently far apart. There was a key hidden on Crook's Hollow, a second one in a shipwreck by Crooked Mass, and a chest on Thieves' Haven. You'll notice we got away scot-free during this entire quest because the two brigantines kept butting heads at the fortress instead of giving us a hard time. We have been sailing long enough to not care for any more distractions, ignoring any and every AI enemy the game put in front of us and making use of every shortcut available even if it came at the cost of our anger. I know I just made this quest look very short, but trust me when I say that, it was a heck of a lot of sailing, and I was very much looking forward to finding the artifact. So you can imagine my reaction when what we found inside that double lock box was no such artifact, and instead, even more work. What do you think we have to do with this cliff? Oh no. Oh no. After traversing half the Sea of Thieves, we finally arrived at the tail end of that quest. And at last, we had the crown in our hands. Yeah, don't be mistaken, we had just completed the Shroud Breaker itself and are yet to find any of the Infinity Stones. Something tells me the journey to the Shores of Gold will be a lot more arduous than anticipated. And as such, I'll have to wait till next week. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with the tallest tales on the sea, and until next time, peace.